Hold on. So I'm going to go to the video first, Brother BK, and then I'm going to come back to what you gave me so we can read through it. That's why I didn't scroll down, but I got it. BK, Brother BK be sending me, y'all be sending me all kind of good stuff. Here we go. Oh, and it's 55 minutes. Hey, uh, I'm sure if Dr. James White was on the air with me, he would love to interact with you about Psalm 82, but maybe you could do a broadcast with him on his show. <gasps> So um, I gave what I believe is a perfectly defensible, um, perfectly logical and consistent with New Testament usage in John 10 interpretation of Psalm 82, which means I don't believe it is about. Okay, it's, it's still loading. That's why I stopped. I wanted to finish loading loading up okay so it's, it's loading up that's why I, st I stopped it i did that so just to let people know because i wanted to fully uh, load up i don't want us to miss anything okay here we go created sub subordinate to god but divine beings i believe it's earthly judges uh and i believe that's how jesus uses it in john 10 and i personally prefer jesus interpretation to anybody else's uh, i think that's probably the best interpretation always to have <laughs> Are you serious? Now, the right view, because it's supported by the grammar and the context, is that the gods here are divine beings. Here's Psalm 82, verse 1. God has taken his place in the divine council. It's the gods. He holds judgment. Gods here, Elohim, the first, here's the first god, second Elohim. They're both Elohim. I talked about this yesterday. This one is singular because the verb form that it goes with is singular. It's very obvious. Plural, and you can't be in the midst of one. Okay. Okay, before we continue, and I've seen what Brother BK put in the, the chat. So James White and Heiser, they don't get along on this subject, or are you They just disagree. They just disagree. Okay. So they, dis people, so they disagree. People right? just disagree. I can hurry up and leave the house. Okay, so what is the, what is James White perspective on the the traditional view that Jesus is calling the Israelites gods, the judges, the priests, the kings, the judges. So he's claiming that judges are called gods. Ah, okay. He's going with the traditional oldest commentary view. Ah, okay. Now I had that view too because that's what, what a lot I... of people do, and and uh, I believe it could be a parallel. I believe it could be dual. I believe it could be judges, but I believe it also can be divine counsel because it's clear and obvious. It starts off talking about the divine counsel. Mm -hmm. It could be a parallel, the same as Lucifer in Isaiah fourteen. It could mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And, and okay, and before, and I'm gonna get that 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 scripture one more time, well, one more time, which is Psalms, uh, what was that, 82, verse six. So we're gonna just take one more look at it, right? Because I'm looking at at Michael Heiser's screen, and he's already making a strong point here, like the fact that it says, "I uh, I have said, ye are gods." Right now, he's got up there. Um, let, let me see. Hold on, give me a second. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna play around with this for two seconds. Okay. Oh, hold on. I got him. Okay, that's too big. Come down. All right. Okay. 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 Let's see. I have said. Now, let me try one more. Uh, I know in okay, let's try this one. Which one goes directly to the Greek? Is it the NSAB, Brother Brian? I, I mean, I guess you say NET does. NET, okay, okay, let's try that. I don't know where the little okay, uh, oh, what that go, brother? Oh, what. <laughs> I got BK up here. What? I done. Do, what? Ooh, wee, that must have flamed his foot for him to come up here. <laughs> <laughs> but Haley's 
What up, brother Alfredo? Brother yeah. BK. What up, what up? What it do, bro? Okay, we on this. Um, and uh, maybe you can throw some more in, uh, insight into this as well. Because I was looking at Michael Heiser's screen here. Right. right I'm going to go back to it. And it says, God has taken his place in the divine council in the midst of the gods. He holds judgment. Now, okay, so that's, uh, okay, I'm looking at the wrong one. Okay, I was thinking verse six. Um, let me see. Okay, God stands in the assembly of El in the midst of the gods. Okay, and there's two gods here. We got Big G and got Little G over here. Okay, right. right. right so let me shut up. Go ahead, bro. I would like to hear what you got to say so far on this. Well, like, um, what? Well, well, first of all, thank you for allowing me to be on your platform. I think it's my oh, first, bro. This is my your first time. So no, no, no. This your pla. This, you. your, pla this your platform. Definitely and appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you. Go ahead, bro. So like what Brother Brian was saying, right? What, what's funny, right? They're actually both correct. James White and Heiser, right? Because mm -hmm. so when when Jesus is quoting, first of all, he doesn't quote the whole thing, right? He just says, ye, ye are gods, right? Right. The reason why he's doing that, because he knows that his audience knows the rest of the song. That's like me saying to you, what comes up? And you finish my, you know, must come down, right? I don't mm -hmm. have to say the whole phrase because I already know you know, right? Right. So right. these people are experts of the Torah. So when he says it's not, is it not written? You are God. They know the whole rest of the song, right? They know that this council is getting chastised by Yahweh, okay. right? Okay. okay. And we know that it's not Jewish people because when you look at um, uh, what was it? Da -da -da -da. In Psalm 89, mm -hmm. it says, God of Israel is in the assembly of the holy ones. And then ask, for who are in the clouds can be compared to Yahweh? Mm -hmm. So the council's meeting in the clouds. They're in heaven. So Jewish men don't meet Yahweh in the heavens. Right, right. I'm not talking God. about actual human beings. In fact, when you see so many too, he says, I call you God, small g, but you will die like mere men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mere men always die like mere men, right? Right. right. So, but, but so why is he using that for them? Well, remember, right? What's the accusation in in, in John when they when they're going at Jesus? Why do they want to kill him? Because he, he claims to be the son of God. God. Right. He claims to be the son of God. So then he quotes Psalm eighty two, right? And what's Psalm eighty two doing? God is judging his counsel and he's condemning them. Now remember. The Israel, the, the government of Israel, the spiritual government, not the Roman occupation, but the Sanhedrin operates in a similar function like the council in heaven. So what Jesus is doing, he's doubling down. He's saying, oh, so you want to get rid of me because I'm, I say I'm God. Well, you know what God did to his crew in the heavens, right? Mm -hmm. So guess what I could do to you? The same thing. And when he says that, what do they do? What do they want to do? They got they ticked off. Stones. Right. They want to kill him even more. So he doubled down on the claim that he's God. He's like, no, you're right. You're right. I'm God. And just like God actually judged those beings in the heavenly realms, you should be afraid of what I could do to you here. Hmm. So that's the point. Oh, okay. I like the way Michael Heiser puts it. He says that he didn't back down from it. He went straight. Right. He doubled down. He doubled down. Yep. He's like, now nah, you're right. And because I'm right, check this out. Remember Psalm 82? Okay, then. <laughs> but they thought he was going to be like, oh, no, you misunderstood me. He didn't do none of that. Jesus said, well, what it says in Psalm 82? You guys know your Torah. What did God do to his council in the heavens? Okay. So if I'm God, guess what I can do to you? He can destroy. Because the council's the council in the heavens is vastly superior than the Sanhedrin and the scribes, mm -hmm. right? So, but why say? But why say in well, Psalm eighty-two? Uh -huh. Um. Okay, ye are gods. All of you are sons of the Most High. Uh huh. Yet you will die like mortals or die like men. You will fall like all other rulers. Why say that if they're because, not human? Well, you got to go back now. To um, I think De Deuteronomy thirty-two. Okay. Because in De Deuteronomy thirty-two, he's talking about what happened in Babylon. Mm-hmm. 
because when Babylon, God got so fed up with humanity, he actually bounced. Yeah. But but he allowed his counsel to keep keep them in check until you know he's ready to come back. But what, mm. what ended up happening is they started worshiping his counsel, and the council allowed it to happen. They like being worshipped like gods. Yep. So in Psalm 82, God's like, I see what you did. So now you're going to be punished. Because mm -hmm. oh. there's two rebellions. There's the human rebellion, and then there was mm. the rebellion in the heavens. Yep. Oh. So when Jesus came as, as a human being, He's fighting two wars at the same time. Remember, what is it? Uh, Coloss Remember in Colossians, he says that he uh, he made a, a show of them openly. Right. He's talking about both realms. He's talking about the earthly exactly. realm and the spiritual. Exactly. Um, Facts. How did I miss that? What was my mind at? Oh, Lord. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have to get my act together here. Okay, I ain't gonna lie. I was more focused on Israel, but I'm not thinking, you know what? The only time my mind goes to the divine council, it is um sometimes 80 Psalms 82, but it mostly goes to it when um like in the Genesis story, mm -hmm. um uh, uh, uh Genesis 6 um and it's another place too i just can't think of it right now um so that's when my mind goes there so oh so it mm -hmm. was two he was battling two situations i didn't realize that because think about it from the very beginning in genesis right you got the serpent the nakash right mm -hmm. tricks um eve and then of course eve and adam you know they they eat the fruit mm -hmm. the nakash is a cherubim angel guarding the tree so he's rebelling at the same time making not making but persuading eve and adam to rebel as well but so i right thought from that the was beginning, lucifer i thought the snake is is lucifer i well okay. the snake is the snake is the devil no that that's no that's true but he doesn't come to be called a devil too much later on in the scriptures ah uh, okay uh-huh but that okay. is no that, that is the devil i'm saying but that devil the, the word serpent in the Hebrew is Nakash. Okay, okay. And, and we know in um oh gosh, where is it? I think it's in Elijah, where they where he writes this this um taunt against the king, and he he equates the king with this particular guardian cherub. It's like you thought you was like this guy. You thought you was gonna go into the mountain of God and you was gonna become Somebody God, but Ezekiel. then you got Isaiah 14. Right. Ezekiel 28, too. Uh he's talking right. about the anointed cherub. That anointed cherub was the Nakash in Genesis. Yep. That's who that's who Isaiah is referencing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right. Uh Isaiah 14, uh from uh 14 through I want to say like 19. It's 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 right there in the, like the middle part because the Hebrew Israelites they like to abuse verses one and two. Right. Um, uh, and then when we go down here, hold on. That's why this makes for a good apologetic because when the Hebrews try to use Psalm 82, it's like it's about us, it's about Israel. It's like, uh, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. not it's not. Yep, it's you're not. exactly right. That's the reason I always ask them, say, okay, can you show me Israel in Psalms 82? And they ain't going to be able to show because it's not in there. Right. Yeah, because you threw me off when you said, I ain't going to lie, you kind of threw me off, Brother Brown, <laughs> when you said that. I said, <laughs> What is he talking about? He, and I thought I thought it was talking about the leadership of Israel, um, because I seen the word judge, um, you know, judges or judge or leadership. Well, he's there. using that as a reference, as an attack on the judges of Israel. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're partly right, and that's why it's funny because James White and Heiser they they disagree but they actually you can synthesize both their 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 interpretation because heiser is right that it's not talking about human judges but mm -hmm. james white is right that he's using that against the human judges you know what i mean because he's like yeah i'm god and you see what god did to his council so imagine mm -hmm. what i'm gonna do to this council here these humans 
if God so, didn't let if, if God didn't let his divine counsel slide when they messed up, you you think I'm gonna let you slide? So technically both of them are right. In my opinion, yes. In my opinion, yes. It's just it's the way because he's saying that Psalm 82 is talking about humans. James White is wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But he's not wrong in how Jesus is applying it, though. So Jesus is saying, no, this is Psalm 82 is about God's divine counsel. But it, he's using that as a reference to the, the Sanhedrin who's surrounding Jesus in that conversation. So in Psalms 82. Yes. He's talking to the divine council, correct? Yes, correct. So in, in, in John chapter 10, then Jesus is actually talking to the leadership then. Well, he's talking to the human leadership, right? But he's right. referencing the spiritual leadership saying, if I condemn the spiritual leadership in the heavens, right? Because remember, you're, the claim is I'm God, right? You want right. to kill me because I'm God, right? So, all right. Mm -hmm. So if I'm God, what did God do in Psalm 82? Well, well, God condemned his spiritual counsel. Well, if God could do that to those guys, and those guys are vastly more superior than you, what do you think I, Jesus, God, could do to you? Mm. Okay. So he's doubling so down on the claim. Like, oh, so you yeah. mad because I'm God? Well, what did God do in so many too? They know what God did in so many too. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so guess what I could do to you? It's like, ah, now nah, we ain't having that. They picked up the stones ready to kill him. Yep. It's a it's, uh, better word for it is parallelism. Uh, for right. Sure. right. Right. He's parallel in what Psalms 82, man. And he's letting him know that I'm here to judge you. Yep. Hmm. Like, nobody gets to slide. Like, I'm God. Like, if I didn't let these dudes, and these dudes are far more superior than you. If I'm G checking the council in heaven, I'm G checking you too. This is this is nothing to me. This is light checking you. So uh, let me ask this question. I know this is gonna sound like a uh, a silly question. No, yeah. But the divine council did did God create the divine council? Did they come? Because remember, God has always been. So well, God creates everything. Everything that exists it was created through the Son. But why a divine council though? Because God, that's how God likes to, he likes having people around him. God is, remember, God is love. He, don't, he doesn't need the counsel. Because God is God, right? He doesn't need it. He just likes doing it. Um, there's another passage, and this is, this is a good one. I can't, and, uh, let me think about it. It's in, uh, is it 2 Kings Second 21? King. Hold on, let me find it first. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, I'll pause right there. Okay, yeah, uh, right. I know, I know he likes, you know, he lo he loves fellowship. He makes that very clear. But it, by him being the ruler of all everything, right? <laughs> because sorry, the scriptures sorry. say, uh, yeah, who, say it again. The scriptures say, who can counsel God? And, it's, and God doesn't need counsel. He doesn't need assistance. No, not at all. So, so why have a counsel in the first place? Because God could, that's God's prerogative. God could do whatever he wants. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. I don't know why he has a counsel. He does, does he need one? Absolutely not, because he's God. But he, okay. does it, he does it all the time. He does, you know, he, uh, I think the scripture that Brian was talking about, you know, when they're going to um, get rid of um, Ahab, mm -hmm. right? He had mm -hmm. he he takes requests and suggestions from the council, and one of the council says, "Hey, let's let's give this guy a, a lying spirit mm -hmm. since he's First lying anyway." Picture. So guys, like, yeah, I like that. Yeah, do that. Mm -hmm. huh. As Michael Houser said, God don't need a council; he just chooses to do it. Now, here, and here's a better question, Sister Cherry: Why make you? Because I need I'm, to make you because he loves me. Oh, well, there you go. First, first Kings this year, first Kings chapter 22. Okay, first, what? Okay, for, hold on now. First Kings chapter what? 22. You, 22. Okay, and actually, just started verse one because actually, the whole chapter is it talks about the whole thing. 
the whole council situation? Okay. Well, I mean, you could basically you got to get the context and figure out what he's what he's talking about and and why why did they uh, use the profit to do this? Okay, so you want me to start at first one? It says for three years Syria and Israel continued without war. But in the third year, Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said to his servant, do you know Ramoth Galid be, uh, belongs to us? And we keep quiet and do not take it out of the hands of the king, uh, of, the king of Assyria, I mean, of, of Syria. And he said to Jehoshaphat, will you go with me to battle at Ramoth Galid? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people as you, your people, my horses as your horses. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, inquire first with, uh, for, the Lord, uh, for the word of the Lord. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, shall I go to battle against Ramoth Galid, or shall I refrain? And they said, go up for the Lord will give it into your hands of the king. Hmm. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not here any uh, in another prophet of the Lord of whom we may inquire? And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, Micah, the son of, El oh boy, I'm a bad with this, Alama, but I hate him. <laughs> but I hate him for he never prophesies good concerning me <coughs> excuse me but evil and Jehoshaphat said let not the king say so then the king of Israel summoned an officer and said bring quickly Micah the son of Elam and now the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah were sitting on their thrones arrayed in their robes Mm, interesting. At the threshing floor, at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets were prophesying before them. Hmm. And Zedekiah, the son of Chenat, y'all see it. I'm going to mess that up. <laughs> <laughs> Made for himself a horn of iron and said, Thus saith the Lord, with these you shall push the Syrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied and uh, so and said, "Go up, Ramoth Galid, and triumph. The Lord will give it to you into your hands of the king." Hmm. And Micah prophesied against Ahab, and the messenger, and the messenger who went to summon Micah said to him, "Behold, the words of the uh, of the prophet with one accord are favorable to the king." Let your words be like the word of one, uh, word of them, and that speak favorably. But Michael said, "As the Lord lives, what the Lord says to me, that I will speak." I know that's right. And when he had come to the king, and the king said to him, "Micah, shall we go to Ramoth Galilee to battle, or shall we refrain?" He said, and he answered to him, "Go up and triumph. The Lord will give it into the hands of the king." But the king said to him, how many times shall I make, your, uh, make you swear that you speak to me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? And right, here we go, sister. Here's the key part. All right. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let each return to his own home in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you, did not tell you he was not going to prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Michael said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne mm. and all the host of heaven standing beside him on the right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who will entice Ahab and that uh, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Galilee. And one said one thing and another said another. Then the spirit came forward and stood before the Lord saying, 
I will entice him. And the Lord said to him, but, but uh, by what means? And he said, I will go out and I and will be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. And he said, you are to entice him. Mm. and you shall succeed, go out and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all of these, your prophets. The Lord has declared disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, the son of what you see right there, came near to struck Micah on the cheek and said, how did the spirit of the Lord go from me to speak to you? Mm. And Micah said, behold, you shall see on the day when you go into the inner chambers to hide yourself. And the king of Israel said, seize Micah and take him back to Amon, the governor of the city and jo uh, Joash, the king's son, and said, thus saith the king. Put this fellow in prison and feed him mega rations of water, at bread and water until I come in peace. And Micah said, if you return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, hear all you peoples. You want me to continue? Not to continue. You want to continue? All right, guess. I mean, it's up to you. I mean, but it's well. No I mean, way. that's the but that's the point, right? What what we're seeing is an actual council meeting that God is having with his with the host of heaven, and he's like, "Hey, this guy, I want him out of here. Mm -hmm. How do you think we should get rid of this dude?" And one spirit would say this, one spirit would say that. The one spirit's like, "Look, I'll do it." It's like, "How you want to do it?" It's like, "Well, I'll be in a, in a, a lying spirit." Says they're already liars. We might as well just go for it, right? And God's like, yeah, I like that. Do that. And he goes and does it. Now, it's still God's will. They're not doing anything outside of what God doesn't want. Mm -hmm. But God's working with them. He likes doing that. He likes doing that with us, too. Yeah, but... And please don't take it. I, Lord, please, I'm not challenging you, so please. I'm just asking questions. But... Don't that kind of make God look a little bad that he will let this spirit go out and put a lying spirit in the prophet's mouth because God say don't bear false witness. God hates lying. Or because, is this a punishment? because these dudes, no, no. What happens is you're already that person. So I'm just going to just let, you know, I'm going to, I'm, you know, this is what you want. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you what you want because you're already a liar. That's mm -hmm. the problem. You're a liar. So I'm going to make you a good liar. That's all. So you're going to make it worse? I'm going to make it worse because that's what you want. I'm going to speed up the process. It's like the, it's like the flood. Right before the flood, there was all this violence in the land. And everybody was killing each other. It's like, oh, you like destruction? I got you. Let me speed up the destruction for you. Mm -hmm. This is what you want. Right? God gives you what you want. If you want righteousness, he's going to give you that. If you want wickedness, oh, I'll, I'll give you that too. Yeah, but mm, okay. Yeah, okay. Isn't it, it's, it's like he's like this is what you want. This is the the logical conclusion of who you want to be. Now you know atheists try to use this against us, right? No, I know. But here's the thing. But they can't. You know why? Because then you got to ask them. Because they'll say, "Well, this is wrong." Then you ask them, well, what makes it wrong? By what standard do you judge this by being wrong? Because they have no they have no 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 standard for right and wrong. So you're appealing to the subjective or objective morality. There, there it is. Because for you to say what God is doing is wrong, you have to go by a standard. And what the and where do you hang your standard on? The atheists have no place to hang the morality. Right. We That's do. That's true. So the, the minute they say we're doing something wrong, they actually have to use our worldview to critique our worldview. Because hmm. we have we have something that grounds our morality. You don't. So the minute they say we're doing something crazy, it's like, yeah, how? By what rule? By what by what standard? Because you don't have one. Hmm. That's true. Them. The minute they critique us in any way, it cuts them. 
Right, because it, what standard are you judging us by? Right, right. Hmm. Now, that, that doesn't mean that an atheist can't be a good person. It's just they can't justify why they're being a good person. Well, they have to borrow 